Instagram. We should talk about what they do want because there is a reason why they are doing this. And I think that it's pretty clear. The idea is that they want to provoke Russia into uh, invading Ukraine at, to get pretext to pass an insane package of sanctions in mm-hmm. order to isolate Russia. And, why, and get Nord Stream canceled. And get Nord Stream mm-hmm. canceled. Yeah, yeah, which is part of it. Now, You're canceled, sis. I... <sighs> It's so there's so much to fucking talk about. I'm going to see how quickly I can do this without getting too far into the weeds. But I will say, why are they afraid of Russia? Why do they want (laughs) to isolate Russia with sanctions? Right now, the you we've talked about how sanctions packages work on the show before in the context of Russia and in the context of Iran, and that it's not just being like, well, we're not going to give you money. You know, it's yeah. like trying to basically set up blockades so that capital yeah. and 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 just cash cannot move in in other countries to completely freeze them out of the global market. Like that's mm-hmm. the idea. And again, Putin, seeing what happened to the country in the '90s and seeing what it was going to have to like the kind of long march it would take to get Russia basically off the dollar. I mean, that's the goal, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it doesn't have to be dependent on the West in any kind of capacity. The, the U.S. passing these sanctions pack- packages has kind of like adversely propelled Russia toward that goal totally, totally. much quicker than the U.S. probably wanted. Well, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. So it pushed it pushes Russia uh, further into like autarky, mm-hmm. meaning that it you know being completely mm-hmm. on it you know completely and totally like self reliant like a self reliant yeah, but also more and more. Uh, closer to China. Mm-hmm. And that is com- com- the complete opposite of the goal of what the U.S. wants. What the U.S. wants is to isolate Russia away from China. Um, and, and so it can kind of attack both, um, you know, on their own. I think there's still kind of, again, these like kind of, you know, the the slow march of these bureaucracies into their gravestones. Like they're all kind of have these same approaches of the kind of old school Soviet isolate and contain um, you know, encircle and contain strategy for these countries that just is, is you know, they've come up with um, countermeasures. It's just well, not going to work. It's, that, that in particular is so ridiculous because, I mean, a, a real, real, real stroke of luck for the U.S. Uh, during the Cold War was the falling out between China and the Soviet mm, Union. Yeah. I mean, the the world would look very, very differently if some things had ha- different things had happened back then, if some cooler heads had prevailed. Mm-hmm. Um, and if Khrushchev hadn't lied mm-hmm. like he did. Um, He's but, Ukrainian, uh, by the way. What's up? He's Ukrainian, by the way. Yeah, Khrushchev. yeah. God also, damn yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you fucking go. Yeah. Wildly. And a bit of a fibber. Yeah. But, uh, but um, so, you know, it, it, it's sort of, it's it's insane to me that they would they would basically push them together like this. I mean, yeah. just in terms of, you know, from, from, their, from their perspective. But it also gives, uh, I guess, it gives you an enemy to fight too. You know, you know, it's a Russia, Russia and China, sort of putting them together as a block. You know, I mean, and and, and I don't, yeah, I don't think the US wants that. I think they're just. I, I, I think you're right. Liz. I mean, they're so fucking dumb. Like, yeah. there are people. I remember even in the middle of Russia Gate, in the middle yeah. of like crazy story after crazy story about Russia controlling the world and doing this. The New York Times at one point, it's like somebody like woke up one morning like, holy shit! Um, I just had a thought. Um, Russia should be our ally, and and I think this is kind of the Trump nationalist idea too. And some yeah. of the realists, uh, Russia should be our ally because because China is actually super strong and is stronger than Russia, and so we need to be allies with them. And they published an actual editorial, and it was it was one of the most schizophrenic editorials. It's like <laughs> Russia's really bad. This? It was in the New York Times um, in like 2018 or 19. Yeah, and it was like Russia's really bad and evil, but China is a much more serious threat. Um, Russia needs to realize that its interests, this is what they always say, its interests are really with the West. And so they need to stop, mm. they need to stop pissing us off. Also, Russia's super weak and needs yeah. to get over the thought that it's super powerful and it can't really do anything. So if it hooks up with China, it's just going to be China's little bitch and China's autocratic and is not going to respect oh Russia. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. really, uh, Russia, you're weak and you need to be with us. So come on over. And then the next day it's like, Vladimir Putin again, you know, yeah, spreading yeah, autor- yeah. authoritarianism around the world. Like, I think they're actually just completely fucking schizophrenic. Well, yeah. And they're not, there's, when's the last time anybody, any faction or people suffered consequences for fucking up foreign policy over yeah, and over and over? I mean, look at the over. State Department. Nobody. Yeah. You're talking about post Mao China, right? Because <laughs> yeah. most people never did either. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, that, that, that's the thing is like, guys, I thought we were supposed to be pivoting to Asia. 
this is the pivot to Eurasia. I'm not trying to get involved in any of that. <laughs> like I'm trying that. to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to die in the South China Sea yeah. over an island made entirely of concrete that has yeah. like one prop plane <laughs> on it. That to me is an important matter of national security. <laughs> And Russia and, and China's partnership is real and it's like a real it deal. Is. Like I we yeah. just just today, just this morning, <laughs> we had the uh, you know, I don't know, I didn't watch it, so perhaps there was a gong involved, but I don't know. Whoa, uh, to, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was gonna say proverbial gong to welcome in the what the yeah. Winter Olympics in Beijing and who was there right before huge press conference, Putin and Xi. Yeah. With a uh, big alliance. statement. Yeah. Also, um, yeah, first first foreign leader that she has met with in two years. Which wow, you know, little it blue really pill on yeah. COVID there. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, and the Olympics are crazy. Co- well, yeah. China has a zero COVID policy, very famously. Right. Yeah. But um, you know, th- their partnership uh, has been going on for a long time. Although I think yes. again, the West has been. First of all, they they won't report on it because I think they're afraid of it. But also, they they they're not really sure how for real it is. I think there's a yep. really like because mm-hmm. access to China is so limited, and I don't think they have a lot of people in Russia. The the West is really I think, uh, I think in the dark in denial. and in denial. in denial. Yeah, I, and I mean, look, yeah. it's been a couple years now that Russia and China have been buying and selling oil to each other, not in the petrodollar, which is a big mm-hmm. fucking deal. Um, they have, you know, like I said, increased like massive trade with one another. They have made pretty strong statements towards an official military alliance, although it seems still like it seems like that's it's going there, but it hasn't been officially announced. It seems like all arrows have pointed that way. And, um, you know, I think this morning the two of them really reaffirmed. I mean, look, you know, they said in the statement they were like, Russia has made these demands to get the West to back off on the Ukrainian border. They want no more expansion of NATO. They want a removal of all NATO forces yeah. from Eastern Europe. They want no NATO exercises near borders. They want no U.S. nukes in Europe. They want a retraction of the 2008 invitation to Ukraine and Georgia. They want legally binding agreements that no strike systems will be deployed near yeah. Russia. They want to have regular military talks. And China was like, we support them in all of their, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, in all of the... Um, requests that they've made to every NATO member and we, you know, affirm their right to yeah. whatever, whatever, whatever. I mean, it's like a very strong statement, again, on the eve of, you know, the fucking Olympics, a big, one of the biggest fucking deals on the world stage. Yeah. So it seems pretty clear that regardless of what the West thinks or is in denial about, like, this shit is real, it's happening, it's not going anywhere and it's the year of the fucking tiger baby. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it's it's been uh, I, I totally agree, and it's it's a process that's been going on. In a lot of ways, it's just it's it's a lot deeper than people realize because there, this is a relationship between two big powers that um, that ha- that share some uh, common experiences in like the world and the humiliation and mm-hmm. humiliation from the West yeah. and so on, and that are not natural allies. I mean, that's why even both no. when both were com- communist. Uh, I mean, the uh, Russians don't, I would say the Russian elite always generally wants to be part of the West, Yeah, but they yeah. understand it ain't going to happen unless they're completely subordinate. Like yes. America has this idea that is as deeply held Orthodox faith as I, I imagine they believed in Christianity, you know, seven, 800 years ago, which it, like it's the world, which is that there cannot be a power a country powerful enough to buck American hegemony because American yeah. hegemony is benevolent. Ultimately, whatever our little problems and little freckles, it is benevolent. And any other country is only going to introduce essentially chaos in that world. And and we can't lose that power. I mean, I think this is yeah. so deeply held orthodox faith so that what well, we don't understand that that forces Russia and China to, through common interest and common experience to come together. And what they've been doing over the last 15 years is is doing like slow steps towards mm-hmm. each other. And it's all been about like um, uh, confidence building or, um, you know, trust building. And they've been coming through for each other over and over and over. Yeah. Cause, cause, cause it's not a, it's not culturally a natural deep fit, but it's in a, a lot of ways, it's much more than that. Um, it, they're driven together by common experience. They're two rising powers mm-hmm. and the U S it just um, as a like motor function reflex will try to subvert and undo any challenger anywhere. That's just how it is through whatever weapon we weaponry it has, whether it's the financial system, the NGOs, mm-hmm. you know, whatever the hell it can do propaganda. And it's good at some of those things. still propaganda. It's just, um, 
It's forcing them together. Yeah, yeah. you're the tiger, baby. You mentioned well, the you dragon mentioned, rises. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned the shared humiliation. I think yeah. too that it's also the shared. I mean, the shared, I would say, mutual respect for how they rebuild their countries, right? right? Like, regardless of how, you know, I, I, I don't know, without evaluating, like, China as, like, you know, a pure communist or however, you know. Okay, that, well, I think that's fair to evaluate them as such. And <laughs> well, no, I just mean not in this episode. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. I do think that there's clearly a common respect there for, you know, the growth that's happened under Putin and under Xi. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the middle class in China is so fucking massive at this yeah. point. It, the home mm -hmm. ownership rates are like 95%. It's like, you know, they're, they're, they've got their own issues right now with mm -hmm. the housing market, but it's really fascinating to see how they're responding, which is basically the, the opposite of how the U.S. responded when it faced a similar crisis. Yeah. Um, and so I think that Just there like the is pandemic. A, yeah, I mean, very much so. And so I think all, there's yeah. a very, you know, very much a shared respect there and you see it when you watch you know i encourage people again if you don't know how to like you know it, it's difficult to evaluate who to read and how where to get sources and all of that but like one of the first places to start is like read the diplomatic statements like read what these guys are saying because especially in the case of russia and china it's not the mm -hmm. case with the u.s which the, we should say the State Department is out of their fucking minds and just mm -hmm. like a bunch of children. But you read these diplomats from China and from Russia, and these are serious guys. You know, they're yeah. professionals, and the way that they talk about these things, you can kind of read between the lines. And yeah, I mean... Practical too, yeah. Yeah, Practical, it, it, I think the thing yeah. that the U.S. is afraid of is very much happening. 